Uh, ever wonder how successful investors get that way? Well, my next guest managed $20 billion, and they say it is a matter of discipline. Jonathan Hurdle is the CEO of Hurdle. Callahan and Randall Burkett runs their New York office. Gentlemen, welcome. Good to have you with us. Let's talk about this whole idea, uh, Jonathan, of what are the eight rules that people need to at least keep in mind if they really want to build substantial wealth. And start off with this whole idea that there is no free lunch. It sounds like an anecdote, but you really mean it. Well, I do, but they, you know, it's interesting. There are probably more than eight rules, but we came up with these eight resolutions for the new year, thinking about what we learned last year and what we were reminded of. And the first one is I really think this notion of no free lunch and that the markets have limitations and you invest in equities because over time they do give you a higher return. They have that potential, but they're also riskier. And so the idea that when you invest in equities, you don't accept more risk is not true. And so from time to time, that risk is really expressed in dislocation. And so you really have to say to yourself, if I'm going to be an equity investor, how much money can I really put in an asset class that at some point is going to dislocate? And so you really have to think about a risk pool of assets and a safe pool of assets. And people tend to get that mixed up. So you have to expect that in those risk pool of assets, things could go wrong, at they least can... over uh, one particular period of time. Yep. Rene, let me come to you. Let's talk about uh, conducting, well, let's talk about being skeptical and not being cynical. Hmm. Well, I think the problem with uh, cynicism is that its polar opposite is pie in the sky optimism. And so. The way people feel about you know, investments and how things end up, you, you don't want to be there. You need to be skeptical and you need to understand things and go the extra mile to, to dig in. But cynicism is the wrong concept for this. You know, to invest, you want to be skeptical, understand things, make sure they make sense, and then you can move forward. All right. I'm going to go back and forth here. Tell me about due diligence, because this ends up being a, sort of a follow-on to this idea of do your, in, your homework. And this is not just for retail investors. This is for institutional investors as well as, you know, family offices, right? Right. And I think, for example, in last year, um, one of the things that was an obvious uh, lesson where there were so many frauds out there and so many people got involved with frauds because a friend suggested it. And they never really understood what was going on and they never really did their own due diligence. It was just kind of a whisper down the lane recommendation system. And that's just never good. I mean, this is serious business, and you have to do your own due diligence. You have to understand what the process is. Most of the best investment procedures in the world, processes, are based on common sense. If you can't understand them, you shouldn't invest. All right, so if you can't understand it, don't invest. What about understanding diversification? You say people may talk a lot about diversification, Randy, but they don't follow it a lot. Well, uh, wealth is made in many cases by concentrating your investments or being in one thing and being an expert. And certainly keeping money, a diversification is one of the key concepts. And it's been spoken about you know, so many times and it just is a, a rule that, you know, last year people were talking about, well, diversification no longer works. I mean, diversification is like gravity, okay? It works. And so, Last year, there was dislocation, and there were certain things that were going on because of the way the market was. But Right. I mean, if you what? were diversified and you had equities, but you also had bonds, you took a look at the bond holdings, and you went, all right, if I got treasuries, at least right. those are working. Right. In a crisis, all correlations go to one. That's widely understood. So this notion of diversification working for a quarter or for six months may not work, but diversification works. And if you're doing your due diligence and you try as hard as you can to get a good investment or in a safe investment with reputable people, and it turns out that it just was not discernible and you missed something and you lost money. Well, at least you only lost a little bit. So this whole notion of diversification has to do with humility and really being reasonable about what you can you, what you, how much due diligence you can really conduct yourself. Well, Jonathan, you mentioned also this idea of a time frame. You brought in this whole idea of taking a look at things on a quarterly basis. And you say that people tend to look at things on a, on a short time horizon that really creates, well, a lot of havoc in their investing patterns. Right. You really have to tie your investment horizon to the value creation horizon at the companies you're investing in. So how long does it take to start with a green field, field build a new building, and lease it. You know, it takes years. It doesn't take quarters or certainly not days. So there's this notion that, con that confuses, and we'll get to this, this notion of trading and investing. And if the, what you want to do is be careful on how you make decisions. Make the decisions based on logical processes and then have the discipline to let that process work. Randy, okay, we're going to talk about uh, the idea of caring about uh, the price. That's important because it's always about 
price. Tell me about that. Well, I, I think what's interesting is on uh, the micro level, and you know, we see bottoms up alpha creators. Basically, it's easy to consider price because, you know, is is IBM a good company? Yes, it is. Is it a good stock? What's it depend on? Price. When you think about asset classes, most people who are making those decisions are saying, well, we need to be in large cap growth. And they just make an adjustment without thinking about price in an asset class, which is something you need to think about before you move. So we think price is critical and we're paying into attention to it constantly. All right. I want to thank you, gentlemen, very much for coming and talking to us about investing versus speculating. Thank you very much.